My name is Jack O'Connell, and I'm the Chief Education Officer for School Innovations and Advocacy. And I'd like to thank my longtime friend, the President Pro Tem of the Senate, Daryl Steinberg, for being here today. Thank you very much, Daryl. Thank you, Jack. Thank you for all your public service. It's great to be with you. Just like you, labor of love. So labor of love. Really appreciate all your help. Sometimes the educational community feels alone. They're on an island, and they want to make sure that they have friends here like you. Can you reassure the education community? Well, sure. I, I know for myself, like uh, most of my colleagues, that I'm the product of California's public education system. I graduated from high school in 1977, the year before the famous or infamous Proposition 13 passed in California. And we know what it, what's happened to school finance and the array of extracurricular and core services that schools now are challenged to provide. And, and so I feel this not just uh, in my head, but in my heart as well. And certainly uh, our foremost challenge as we grapple with another difficult budget here in California is to do everything possible to avoid four and a half to five to six billion dollars worth of cuts to public education. We know that superintendents and school boards throughout the state are already looking at the worst case scenario. Our job is to help them avoid that worst case scenario by avoiding those cuts, getting the revenue that uh, they need in order to make sure that uh, in this terrible recession that we don't cut any deeper than we absolutely have to. After all of the cuts, cuts to counselors, nurses, librarians, the class sizes, the shorter school year, elimination of summer school in most districts, our school community simply cannot afford to take any other cuts. Uh, can you offer your assistance to the school community so that we can make an even greater investment in public education? I am relatively confident that there are enough members of the minority party who understand that cutting public education four to five billion dollars, seeing the increase in class size up to 35, 40 and beyond in some districts, eliminating after school sports or other extracurricular activities is not the kind of California that we or they want to see and that we will be able to put together a difficult but essential agreement to provide the revenue to avoid those kinds of cuts. Uh, what advice would you have then for the literally hundreds of people watching this, uh, leaders in their community, leaders at the state, in terms of being able to help you? The center of attention ought to be the local superintendents, the school board members, the business leaders, and the community leaders, because the legislature and the people need to hear what education leaders are doing to plan for this worst case scenario. Not to scare people, but to inject a dose of reality into these budget deliberations. They need to hear, and they are hearing, my legislative colleagues, what an all cuts approach looks like, how that will affect the classroom, how we can't afford to lay off 20,000 plus teachers in each of our communities. Uh, and, and what they can do, what the leaders in the community can do, is be that strong voice that doesn't just wave a flag and make a political argument, but actually demonstrate, actually demonstrate to state legislators, especially in some of those key districts where their member, their representative may be on the fence here in terms of what to do, what it means in your district, in your community, if there is a four to five billion dollar cut in the public education budget, what that means for teachers, what that means for students, and what that means for, for their communities. That voice, that voice, those voices are the single most important component, in my view, of getting the votes we need up here to get the money and avoid the cuts.